Hello everybody, welcome to this video where I'm going to explain the quotations from the Lord of the Flies quotations revision song. Uh, check out the link in the description to see the song. This is the explanation of the quotations. So the first quotation is something that Jack says in chapter 2, which is, the English are best at everything. And I think this is a really good starting point for our quotations. It's really where the novel begins in terms of this misconception that people are good, uh, in this case the uh, people of England, the idea that we have something to be proud of. And if you've studied Lord of the Flies, you know that uh, a lot of the book is about the fact that uh, people are not inherently good, that we need rules and regulations that we have in society, uh, and if we don't have those things, we'll become a primitive, animalistic, kind of uh, evil group of people who don't um, care for each other, don't follow any rules and sort of regress into this uh, lack of civilization. So I think the English are the best at everything is a really good starting point. Um, there's a misconception that the boys and society as a whole, and perhaps we as the reader have this misconception as well, the idea that people are inherently good. Um, so that's why I started with this quotation. Mankind's essential illness. This is what Simon is thinking of in chapter 5. And um, what Simon understands before anyone else is the reality of the beast, the idea that uh, mankind is evil. And that's what we should be afraid of, this in inner depravity. And that's the real beast that we should be worried about. The conch exploded into a thousand white fragments and ceased to exist. So, as you know, the conch is a shell that is used um, to, you know, for lots of things, but to, you know, get people to a meeting. And the conch is a symbol in the novel, a symbol of civilization and order. And this is shown through the fact that Ralph uses the conch as a tool when he's uh, leading as a, a sort of democratic leader. It calls everyone to a meeting. It governs the meetings uh, because the boy who holds the conch is the one who's able to speak. And this quotation that I've given here is from chapter 11 where the conch is destroyed. It also coincides with the death of Piggy and it symbolises the end of rational thought, the end of civilised life on the island. Uh, with the uh, explosion of the conch is the last bit of sort of um, civilised life gone and the moral and social standards that the boys brought with them uh, to the island have gone with it. Chapter 1, the long scar smashed into the jungle was a bath of heat. One of my favourite quotations, this. Uh, it's really interesting to think about this because the island was this idyllic, pure, perfect setting. And it is the arrival of the boys in the plain um, that actually causes all of the suffering and evil. Because the scar here is the impact on the ground of the plane as it's crashed. So it's referred to as a scar, it's scarred the ground. And that shows how it is the boys who are bringing suffering and damage to an otherwise perfect idyllic island. And this is reminiscent of the biblical imagery in the text, or some of the biblical imagery. This idea of the Garden of Eden, this idea of God creating a perfect world, and then mankind coming to that world and sinning and ultimately ruining it uh, for everybody. It's the same idea we have here. It's almost a Garden of Eden image, isn't it? This perfect setting and then mankind arrives and essentially sins, does something wrong that causes all sorts of problems. So you can refer this to the uh, the biblical teaching of um, you know God creating a perfect world and man sinning and, and ruining it essentially. Choir stands still links to the bridge. We can't have everybody talking at once. We'll have to have hands up like at school. So Choir Stand Still is Jack in chapter 1. And you can see um, that even though it's only chapter 1, Jack is aggressive and bossy. He's shouting at the group. He's telling them what to do. And this represents his uh, dictatorship style, his dictatorial style of leadership. He is a dictator. And he you know, tells everybody what to do. He has complete totalitarian control and everybody has to do uh, what he says. That's his way of ruling, is to have total power 
over people. In chapter two, Ralph says we can't have everybody talking at once, we'll have to have hands up like at school, and that presents the other style of leadership. And a lot of you in your exams will end up writing about the you know, Ralph or Jack and the, the styles of leadership they represent. And, and Ralph represents a, a democratic approach to leadership. Everyone has the right to speak. Uh, there should be a simple system in place to govern everyone's rights. And the idea of having hands up like at school is interesting because it's childish imagery. The childlike imagery of school is used to perhaps show how naive this idea is. But as I said, his style of leadership is the opposite to that of Jack, who is, has these blunt, um, you know, sort of bossy, the exclamation mark, the telling everyone what to do um, right away as well in chapter one. It's not like he devolves into that. That's who he is right away. So two distinct uh, approaches to leadership, ultimately. Ape-like among the trees is a description of Jack when he's hunting in chapter 3. And of course there's this um, animalistic imagery, which again ties in with this idea of these civilised boys becoming more and more kind of primitive and, um, you know, sort of uh, literally animalistic. Um, there's so many uh, examples of imagery, the fact that their clothes are rotting off, the fact that they paint their face with masks to cover up who they, um, their humanity, all of that sort of thing. Um, you know, and this is another example. But also, I like the idea of this as the ape-like, because of course it links to Darwin's theory of evolution that uh, mankind evolved from apes. And what we really see an example of on the island is the opposite of the theory of evolution, it's the kind of devolution, it's the way that they regress into this animalistic primitive state, which of course is why I have chosen the quotations for the chorus of the song, um, which is where you have from chapter 1 to 2 to 10, the um, sort of primitive caveman-like expressions. We start off with Sam, Eric, and then it becomes Sam and Eric, and then it becomes Sam and Eric, all one word. It's as if they're uh, becoming you know, more and more primitive. They're losing their ability to articulate their thoughts and to express themselves in the English language. And you know, they're becoming more and more uh, sort of um, you know, Neanderthal-like and, and primitive and animalistic. So those are the quotations I would memorise for Lord of the Flies. And of course there are others, but I think these will cover most things you could have to write about in the exam. So I hope you found this useful.